This podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to replace professional medical advice or be a substitute for therapy. Please contact a mental health professional as needed. If you are in need of urgent or emergency health care, please contact your medical mental health provider, call 911, or go to your nearest emergency room. The information presented does not reflect the opinions of those with whom we may be affiliated as employees, consultants, or colleagues past and present. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Slightly Sane. We are your hosts, Christy and Laura, giving you just enough to keep it together this week. Hello. <laughs> Christy's get, getting in mode. Good morning. It's the rain. Good morning. It has been. It's the rain. I can't stand it. I know, I know. we need it, but what the hell? I, I can't even say it. I can't tell anybody that I'm upset that it rained all day yesterday because nobody has any sympathy. No, I just can't get up. It makes it really difficult. Right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Which, related to our topic, can't. I don't know if it's so good for our mental health and longevity. It is not. And so we were, we were talking about a topic for today and, and, you know, Christy and I come up with some great existential <laughs> angst conversations when we're hanging out in the office. But I, I think it sort of came from today's my son's birthday. He is 22 today. And it hit me that I am the mom of a 22 year old. Right. And it got us into the topic of longevity and how long do you really want to live? And is it possible? And what if you could live forever? And it got us into this really kind of existential thing about what, what does it take to live? And would you rather live a life, live a good high quality life or just put in the years? And so that got us talking about the whole concept of, you know, what's going to be possible with science and do we really want to go that route? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, I I was on a plane recently and the woman next to me was doing, um, I think she actually had one of those jobs where people are paid to rate a website. Do you know what I'm talking about? There's a company that pays people to go on different websites. The point is one of the websites she was on and the the topic was related to longevity. And of course I was peeking over because I'm like, does she know something that I don't know or whatever? And then I figured out what what she was really doing. But the amount of research that, and money that is put into how do we prolong our life expectancy. But the funny thing is the research that you saw and the research that I saw says that the U S in particular actually really sucks with longevity. We are one of the countries that has, I think we're around 77. I got a statistic on is that. Is the age, and we're one of the lowest. So the life expectancy in 2022, according to the CDC in, in America, is for males, it's 74.8, and for females, it's 80.2. And most men would say it's because the women killed them. Uh, I, Absolutely. I don't know. They might have a point. Right. Although, you know, the data also shows that married people are more likely to live longer than single people which shows the danger of isolation. Right. So, but this has been a hot topic for me for several years because I started following, if you guys are on Instagram, following Brian Johnson, who was this tech guy who made his millions several several years ago. I don't know exactly what it was that, that he did, but he founded this company called Blueprint in 2020. And the goal of B- Blueprint, they live by one rule, don't die. Which, oh, okay, great. That's, Thanks. That's, that's, that's like saying, me, don't be anxious. Yeah. That to me is like, okay, that's a, that's a good goal, but I don't know if you can actually, what happens if you do die? Do you ruin the company motto? I don't really know. Well, so, explain more what, cause yeah. I don't know this. I, I don't know about it and mm. I don't know if our audience does either. So, so this is, this is the company. We are a decentralized community united in defeating death and building prosperity. We are at war with death and its causes. So he went on this quest and spends $2 million of his personal money per year to invest in all of these supplements to really recreate his entire body. His body is basically a scientific experiment. And so over the past two years, three years, maybe now, um, he has slowed the pace of his aging by an equivalent of 31 years. So chronological age, he's 46. So if you look on his Instagram, there's a picture of his son, who I think is like 17, 18, him, and then his father. Now, he has really 
reverse time, not only by supplements, by nutrition, but biohacking in terms of working out, which we'll explain a little bit later. Um, plasma injections. I believe it came from his son, like taking plasma from his son, injecting it into him, doing red light therapy to reverse aging. And I got to tell you, to be honest, I liked how he looked before. <laughs> Really? Do you, yeah. ha- do you have a comparison? Yeah. yeah, I'll pull it up. It was, um, shoot, I hope I took a picture of it. But like you keep talking while I'm, I'm looking at it. Um, I thought it was fascinating because he looks a little bit like a vampire right now. And look, Brian Johnson doesn't care what I think about him. And you're so, not a spokesperson. Or I'm not a like spokesperson, that. anything like that. I, I appreciate what he's doing. He's what we call an N equals one experiment. Like it's a single case experiment. And he's basically donated his body to science to see what we can learn about. And it's not really just aging in terms of physical appearance, even though that's part of what he's done. And like I said, I think he looked physically better before, but it's what do you need to do to reverse the metrics of aging in the body? And is it possible? Well, there are two different concepts going on here. One is cognitive aging and one is physically aging. Yes. Maybe I'm just stereotyping us, but I feel like we invest more in the physical aspect of aging. Absolutely. Which in general is just the philosophy. If it looks fine on the outside, then you must be fine. So let's invest in that part instead of the cognitive part. But I mean, you're correct. The amount of time and investment that people put into making sure that they don't look the age that they are is crazy. Oh, I did get a picture. Ah. So, so he said even his face ID is confused. So that's how On much that he, yeah, that's how much he has changed. So that's what he looked like previously. I don't know if you can hold it up to the camera. I don't know if the camera will even see it. The pro- here's the problem is that he, he got skinnier, which made the face. I think that's what maybe you're talking about. And what is his, what is his current age? Do you um, know? His current age, let's see if they said what his current age is. So he is... 46 chronologically, but a lot of his metrics put him in the range range of like an 18 year old. So listen, you know, I always got to find the best quote that anybody ever says. I have the erection of an 18 year old. There you go. Invest $2 million so you can have the erection of an 18 year old. Why not? I don't, I don't know. I just whacked something else by accident because that's that's what I do. I hit the Mm -hmm. thing and it goes somewhere Mm -hmm. else. So again, he slowed the pace of aging by an equivalent of 31 years. This guy's got a lot of followers. Oh my God. Yes. He's got a lot of, so he's got this whole protocol, which he has shared online generously. And of course there are products that go along with it, but this, this begs the question, would you want to do it if you had to devote your entire life to maintaining this? He takes 111 supplements per day. That's what the other, not related to him, but the other person, I mean. I take about 20 just and I, in yeah. pink. I take about 20 and it kills me. This is like the age old question. If you gave up fast food for five years and it gave you five years more on your life, would you do it? And it's, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he had a 31 year age reversal in his gray hair. So 80% reduction. So I thought his hair was dyed, but I, I, I don't think so. I think this is like his real hair, which is kind of cool, but you know, would you want to do it? So he eats 22,250 calories a day, but his dinner is at 11 a.m. So he eats his, he does 16. What time does he get up? He does a 16 to 18 hour daily fast. So most of his calories are in the morning and the meals are not like, hey, let's go to Subway and get a sandwich. It's like this nutty pudding. And I saw one of his meals was like some kind of unique kind of mushroom with some dark chocolate on top of it because your every calorie at 2250 needs to be nutritionally dense. Okay. Does that, does that kind of, that's the science behind it. I'm not arguing with the science. I'm arguing with reality. People don't have the time to put that much thought into what they're eating. And God bless you if you do. I give you a lot of credit. They also don't have the money to invest. I mean, like you said, $2 million of his own money. Right. 
However, I think he's got so many people in his corner that if, if he's willing to do this and we can learn a lot about the human body and how to fix certain things before they come pro- become problems. I'm happy with that. Like he actually, where was it? If I could find it, he, he identified and was able to correct without surgery, what was called a ticking time bomb, which was a bilateral internal jugular vein stenosis, which I don't know what that is. For the people in the cheap seats, what the hell does that mean? Um, I couldn't even tell you, but it's got to be something... The jugular vein, that's a pretty important vein. You know how in the neck they say we go for the jugular? So they must have found a narrowing in there or something that they were able to reverse because of diet. So I think it's interesting kind of stuff. Um, He clearly does some biohacking gym stuff, which is what I do. I go to a biohacking gym um, for bone density. Are you still doing that? I am still doing that. So it's basically like a 15 to 20 minute workout. And so he showed his leg press single rep, because you only do one rep at the biohacking gym, 800 pounds, which is the top one to 2% of 18 year olds. Now I can tell you when I was in New York a couple of weeks ago, I visited the biohacking gym there and I did a leg press single rep of 1100 pounds. Thank you very much. And I have the proof. Wow. Yeah. But what it does is it it's biohacking because it's using the science. So the machine is set up to put the right stress on the bone to create what you actually need for bone growth. So you have two bone growth markers. There's like a bare minimum bone growth marker, and then there's a rapid growth marker. Now, you know, of course me, I can't just be the regular person. I have to be the rapid growth person. So that's the metric that I am always looking for. Um, but, but the science behind it is we shouldn't have to spend hours and hours in the gym. If we can use science and technology to figure out how to get in and out, why not? True. Again, though, I, you're talking about what's the answers for people who don't have time and don't have all this and don't have money? Well, look, I I went online, looked at all the products, looked at all the packages. I think if you're going to buy, let's say an olive oil, extra, everybody knows extra virgin olive oil is, is a good food. It's a superfood. Maybe you invest in a couple of his products that you know are superfoods. So he takes, I think it's either three tablespoons or three teaspoons of his olive oil per day. And it's like this, I didn't even read all the ingredients, but it's not your everyday olive oil. It's got a lot of stuff in it. So I would say pick and choose the products that are worth it to you. If you're going to treat yourself, again, guilty pleasure that we talked about last week. If you're going to treat yourself to dark chocolate, why not buy his super turbocharged dark chocolate that has the polyphenols in it and everything that you would need. I'm going to say this. Watch the preservatives. That's been the big kick right now is because the U.S. puts so much preservatives in things, that's partly what's killing us. Absolutely. The sugars. And I'm saying this full well knowing that there's two Splendas sitting in my green tea right now. You know, but that stuff that I think is a more feasible, realistic way of cutting it down. Um, any sort of cardiovascular exercise, that's regular and that you're allowed to do for what your doctor says you're allowed to do kind of thing. That to me seems more realistic because part of what happens is, like you said, it's an N equals one. This is this is basically pseudoscience. And like you said, we're spending a lot of money and time into living forever. And the conversation that we had had earlier yesterday was, do we, do we really want, like, what's the, what's the perfect number? It's like your phone, right? You sit there and they've got how many gigabytes options for an Apple iPhone? Was there three or four? I don't even know what it is now. There's three. Alex said three. Okay. So and you sit there and you debate, like, how, mu- how much do I need? Oh my gosh, what if I take to this? What would be the, per- the right number for how I long we some, would live? I have some information on that, what believe you got? it or not. 
So I think you had this same study too. So a University of Texas study that was published in the Journal of Aging Studies. This was an older study. I think, I don't remember exactly when it was. It's a few years old. But they interviewed 900 people. Only 33% would take a pill to live forever. And a 2013 Today Show poll said on average, I was shocked by this, on average, the favorite age for men was 47 and for women, it was 53. Not what I what? expected Okay, at 47 all. I get, because men are they're just, they're brilliant. They age beautifully. Women, 53. 53. I think that's bullshit. All right. Call it out. Today's show, give are us a call. Are you serious? I'm serious. You really I would not, think I would not pick 53? Well, here's what I'm thinking. This is why I'm thinking women pick 53. Number one, maybe a proportion of those women are menopausal, maybe postmenopausal. That's that whole area that they don't have to worry about getting pregnant anymore. The child rearing may be mostly over. The demands on their time are a lot less. And maybe they're starting to get back into career, into friends, into vacationing, the things that maybe they had to leave behind when they were raising kids. That's the only thing that I could think of. Uh, that makes sense to me. Um, I, when you say, explain it that way, that makes sense to me. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Now, now biologically, does my body feel the same as it did when I was 20? Absolutely not. That's the shit kicker of it. And that's the other thing we talked about is there's a, such a delayed effect on when you appreciate these things. Absolutely. Like it, at 53, you're appreciating how you were at 43. But at 43, you're like, man, right. My 40. Huh? Right, right. You're looking right. You're looking back. Retro. I think I think I definitely have more pain than I did when I was younger, for sure. But I also think, and here's the trade-off, is I am much wiser and more grounded than I was at 20 or 30. Would I want to go back in that time? Not unless I brought like this personality. Because my 20s and 30s were rough. I wouldn't want to go back there at all. Well, it's the vampire question. What age would you, because longevity is not, when we looked it up, longevity is not just about how long, it's the quality of exactly. life. Exactly. And we were talking about like the meme that I saw on Twilight, which was, would you want to be stuck forever with a guy that you picked at 17? Good choice. That's what I mean. At what age, where, where's the stopping point? And this is where we start playing a chess game. It's not just, do you want to live forever? It's, do you want to live forever if the people that you love are also living forever? Do you want to live forever if your quality of life is the quality of life that it is when you're 53 or 47, depending on if you're a man or a woman? Right. There, we start to, the question gets more complicated. So I saw some studies, some, some data that's coming out that's saying that it's theoretically possible for the human body to make it to 130, let's say. But, but there's no way of knowing what that 130 looks like. Well, they're basing that off the fact that technology will become exponentially more productive because obviously the technology is getting better and better. So then it is going to catapult us past that 100 mark quite quickly into the 130 age because it's just the technology at this point now. I mean, think of like we had the conversation, generative AI. Mm -hmm. The technology is now moving so fast that it's going to push us back. But I don't want to be 130 and look like a prune. That's what I'm saying. This starts to get to be a complicated conversation. Right. I've already told my kids they're responsible for changing my diapers. Like they're not thrilled with that at all. Can you imagine at 130? No. And I've always, and I might've said this before. I've always said this to my parents and I mean this with, with grace and love. I don't want to watch their, them suffer. They, you know, they, they're both in their seventies. They don't look at whatsoever. They're a crazy anomaly, both of them, but it's, you know, they're still doing great. I would not want them to be a hundred and have no quality of life. That's just not what I wish for them or any myself or any buddy that I care about. And think about the Honestly. social, the social isolation piece. I can't get a date now. You think I'm going to get a date at one thirty? Although I heard that the, uh, facilities are rampant with sexual activity. Hmm. Maybe you don't need an erection, which is why year old Brian they're, Johnson. They're, no, I swear to God. I swear. Mm -hmm. That's why the STD rate is so big, but mm -hmm. going back to it, genetics plays a really big part in it. 
So I don't know. Maybe I'll get some of my parents' genetics in there. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I looked like I was 12 years old forever. So I have, I have my parents' genes because they're in their 80s and they don't look at it all. See what I mean? Yeah. Air quality. Well, don't live in LA. And then lifestyle, which is the part that we have control over. I mean, you have some, do you have control over genetics? No. What you got is what you got. Environment? Eh. We know if you stre- got to live somewhere, listen, you got to live somewhere. We know stress is a killer. But and then sometimes lifestyle. sometimes you can't get the stress down. That's what I'm saying. What are what are the realistic things that we could be doing now? I mean, this guy takes fish oil. This so is who's a different this one? person. Who's this guy? Because um, I got to look him up. Does he have so a name? I don't know who the hell he is. Nick Sarave. Hmm. Okay. I'll look him up. He he takes fish oil. Oh, here's another one we're forgetting. Sunscreen. Ooh. Sunscreen is a very reasonable choice that one can make to make themselves not age as fast. So and that, especially in Florida, that's kind of important. But that was something I didn't read. I didn't read closely all of Brian Johnson's protocol because it was like pages and pages and pages and my printer would have, would have burned up. But he was doing the red light therapy, which I absolutely love, by the way. I love it. But he was doing other kinds of therapy just to reverse the signs of aging. But I don't know if it reverses the potential for skin cancer. Right. So you can reverse the like superficial, but I don't know if it erases any of the, the deeper underlying damage. Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. This guy also takes vitamin D3, mm-hmm. which is let, that's the, so yeah, you got to watch sunscreen in Florida, but the benefit is we get a lot of, we get a lot of sunshine unless you're talking about a day like today, today which is what we were talking about before. He eats four servings of vividly colored nutrient rich vegetables. Okay, so Brian I Johnson. I got to do better on my veggies. I Brian guess. Johnson eats 70 plus pounds of veggies per month. That's like a cow. Well, also, too, no preservative. I mean, it's fresh. Yeah. No preservative. I severely limit the amount of processed food, including soda. Shh. Sorry. Can I we eat? get that off camera? I only do it once a day. Look, we all got our thing, like mm-hmm. we talked about before. Green tea. Mm hmm. Dark chocolate. You also mentioned that one. Right. So maybe there's something about this dark. Uh, high intensity, 10 minutes a day cardiovascular exercise. So these, these are reasonable things that I think somebody could do. My mic just you? went again. Yeah, we lost I'm you. back. Mm-hmm. Sorry, folks. So that's reasonable. But I, that goes back to the pyramid. I can't buy supplements and all this other stuff. Remember when we were talking about the pyramid and just getting your basics right? I think those are are part of the basics. I think this is great. If he wants to give me $2 million, I would do it. Well, then. There you go. You might have to hold your mic. (laughs) Christy on the mic. I I could be like Bob Barker. (laughs) (laughs) Then you got to kiss everybody. No, no. (laughs) That poor guy. That poor guy, what he was exposed to. At least what's his name? Carrie. Who's Drew Carey. Drew Carey, at least he learned. But listen, here's also a thing. Bob Barker lived to like 5,000, I mean, before he died. And he was a big proponent of loving animals and kissing everybody on his show. So maybe it was the love and affection that he got that helped him live. Well, quality of life, like we right. said. Mm-hmm. Community, we talked about that last time, having people you love accessible to us. But it, it's technology now make, helping us live forever in a different way. Like what we're doing right now is leaving a blueprint. And that's the name of his company, Blueprint, Brian Johnson. So that if you're, if you're interested in the protocol, and again, I'm not connected with this guy. I just think it's very interesting stuff. Um, you can go out, I think it's www.blueprint.com or something like that. If you look up his name, you'll find it. But you can see all of the products. He lists his protocol, everything that he does. Um, he has 9.1% body fat which is absolutely insane. But he's selling his own products. Of course. I'm going to be the devil's advocate. Of on this course. One. He's selling his own stuff. Mm-hmm. So of course he's going to say it works. Ooh, I know. Circular logic. But he does, he does post the data. He does post the data. So you can look at the data and decide for yourself. But I don't know. Would you want to live forever? I don't know. I wouldn't. The other two in the corner, one of them shaking their head no. Alex? He's undecided. Yeah, what, we got what, an undecided and a solid no. I think that, Intr- introduce yourself, guys, so everyone knows you. Hi, I'm Courtney. I think that 
<laughs> Courtney's on the mic. We've Court- got two Courtney's fabulous on- producers in the corner, and we love to bother them from time to time. Courtney's saying, keep going. I, I think that the option, like the possibility of death is like purpose. If you didn't like the ooh. dark and light thing. If you didn't have No that, oomph. That's existentially beautiful. So just so, just in case like the sound doesn't pick up correctly, she was saying you can, you really can't have the appreciation of life without the knowledge of death coming around the corner. It's that whole dark and life philosophy. That's a fantastic point. And what say you, Alex? Um, you know, ditto what she just said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how do you top that? I don't know. Yeah. No, but it's, it's like we said, what, what would be, do, do we all want to gain like an extra 20 years, an extra 30 years? But she's, you know, but that's true. If we didn't know there was an end, where would the umph be? If, if there was an infinite amount of time to do something, where would the hustle be? But that led us to the other discussion of what happens after death, right? And so, yeah, yeah I got in my head yesterday after that. Because after we talked? We, yeah, because we talked about like some fears people have about dying, just going through the process of dying. And I- said my fear, which was what if heaven is boring and I get bored up there because there's no problems up there. I looked it up. Are there problems up there? How tall was Jesus? Do we know that yet? (laughs) I don't know. Somewhere between 6'1 and 6'5. Perfect. So no, but they- for a man in finance. (laughs) You wouldn't be bored because, because there's contentment there was their rationalization of it. Because whatever it is that happens after death- the agreement is as long as you're not a complete, you know, you know, person who doesn't belong up there. Yeah. Good. Thank you. That was a very Mm -hmm. PC way of saying it. We're all going to be content in whatever the being or position is. And so that's how far in it is to me. And that's how I reassure myself that I wouldn't possibly be bored because part of the deal being up there is you're going to be okay being in constant bliss all the time, which I just can't even imagine. But then there's a con- the continuity concept that we got into is if we're going in a rotation, so if we live a life and then pass away and then we get reincarnated as another one, are the people around us aware that it's us or are we with other people? So like he, you said, your daughter, you know, right. you and your daughter had the conversation. We had the conversation that like we could have been sisters in another life that some psychic medium and, and we could again be together in another life as best friends, but never know that we were mother and daughter. And my daughter was like seven when we talked to this person and that just sent her over the edge. <laughs> like, I can't not have you as my mother, you know? But but this is the stuff that, well, whatever. We had our conversation yesterday and then I was in my head all day. Sorry. <laughs> no, it was just, it was a good conversation, but it really brought up a lot of those existential issues. Why am I here? What am I doing? I remember in science class and I annoyed the shit out of the teacher because I got stuck on this loop, this obsessive loop of when you're born, is it still my soul and I just look different if different sperm made it to the thing first? Oh God. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Am I explaining that correctly? Absolutely. (laughs) And she was like- she had no answer. And it was one where, you know, the, the, just the teachers are just so annoyed by the constant questions. And I was like, no. Would I just look different, but I would still be me? She's like, what the hell? I don't get paid enough for this question. Stand in the corner, Christine. I never got an answer. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I always wonder that fact. Mm-hmm. Like, would you? Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Like, uh, again, if I had married someone different and had kids, they would not look like my kids. That's what I'm saying. And be if, my kids. If anybody has not watched Dark Matter on Apple TV, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. I'll try to say as little as possible without ruining it. It's a, it's a show based on this infinite possibilities of choices that we made and how if one of those choices changed, how even the cascade of everything that came after that would be different. Would it be a different life altogether? Mm-hmm. Would you still have that same moment of I, sure. could, I could choose family or I could choose uh, success, professional success at the sacrifice of family? And it's so and funny. And could you loop back to it? Right. We beat ourselves up over every decision we make, thinking, what if I made the other choice? But it's all theoretical. We have no idea that it would have turned out any better. 
Mm -hmm. It could have possibly been worse. Isn't that funny how on a day-to-day we assume the worst, but then when we're talking about this, we're assuming our choice would have been a better one. Mm -hmm. It's a crazy quagmire. Anywho, we unfortunately have to go. Yeah, it's but it was time. a great it was a great topic. I mean, it was it's definitely something for you guys to check out just for your own personal interest. And look, I'm all for anything that people want to do that will help improve their lives. That's a little bit that's easy. So if it's switching a brand of olive oil or changing ch- your chocolate, hey, whatever, it it doesn't hurt anybody. Look into it. And the placebo effect works. I'm not, I'm not dogging this guy. I'm just bringing a different viewpoint. And I think that's thing. great. And again, it's not accessible to the masses right now, but maybe someday in the future, the research that he has done will make some of these things accessible to the everyday person. Mm-hmm. If there's anything we can take from it and he's got the money to spend, please do it for us. Right. And so I'd the take home, take home points are, listen, take care of your body. Right. Go back to the pyramid, which we discussed in January, the bottom of the pyramid. Look at your basics, your sleep, your food, your exercise. We're here for a short time. Make it a good time too. And it's true. Have fun. It's true. We focus on the day-to-day stuff and we forget that that having fun should be part of our, our living experience. Yeah. So that's it for today, guys. Have a great one. We will see you next week. Happy birthday, Trevor. Peace out. Bye-bye.